Okay, our next guest eats the same few bland things day after day. Now, she refuses to eat what's beneath this dome. Now, that's meat. It smells good. Yeah? It does smell good. It I'm does not, smell I'm not good? repulsed by the sight of it. I could never, I would never eat it, though. You, you would never put that in your mouth and no. chew it up and swallow it? No. All right, here's more about Heather. I do consider myself to be a picky eater. I would say I would be an extreme picky eater. There are very few foods that I've added since childhood. My daily diet consists of the bagel for breakfast, salad or fries for lunch, and then either pasta, salad, or fries for dinner. That's, that's usually what I eat every day, and I really don't get tired of that. If there is a food that I don't know that I like or am not familiar with it, I won't eat it. I get a really strong reaction. I will either gag, vomit, this alarm like that goes off in my head that says, you don't know what this food is. This is foreign. When I talk about it, the look in people's eyes, you know, just kind of, they don't really believe me. It's embarrassing. We're not supposed to eat like this. I'm tired of letting myself down. Letting yourself down how? I've tried to change. I'll uh, go to the grocery store with good intentions to buy healthier food. I get it home, I cook it, and I, I can't get as far as, as in my mouth. Dr. Travis Stork is here with us. He is the host of the Emmy Award-winning show, The Doctors, and so I've asked for his medical input on this. I have to confess, I was looking at your menu, and I'm sitting there as a physician thinking, where's the protein? Where are, where are some of the essential vitamins and nutrients that you need as a woman? We talked about the french fries earlier, which are also a big part of your diet. Bagels, basically, sugar. A bagel just seems to me like somebody got 10 pieces of bread and pounded it into a donut. I mean, it's just, it's so dense. You can't beat a poppy seed bagel with uh, cream cheese. Right. <laughs> Toasted with cream cheese on it, but your heart stops while you're eating it. Um, <laughs> Well. But it's but it's good. Right. You know, I was just talking uh, earlier about being part of a, a unique group. Sometimes it becomes part of your identity. Right. Well, this started for me as young as I can remember. I was told stories growing up that um, I was forced to eat meat. Um, at, when I was um, at my uncle's house, he was babysitting me. He said, I'm going to get her to eat some meat. He put it in my mouth. Three hours later, my mom picked me up. It was still in there. And these are stories that started before. <laughs> you kept it in there for three, three hours? Three hours, yeah. I spit, my mom came and I spit it out. So these stories about my eating started from before, before I, I chose to make this decision. I started this at such a young age that I, di I didn't choose to do this. There wasn't a traumatic issue in my life that all of a sudden I tried to control things by eating something different. Mm -hmm. What's the problem? If well, You look healthy to me. Well, it's not just a matter of me not eating meat. There's such a small amount. I mean, the same with amber. We have the same reactions when we get something in our mouth. And it's not so much the eating. It is so much the eating, but it's the emotional aspect. Try to go to a wedding. Try to go to any social function. I went to a play date and the mother handed me a plate of salmon, rice, and veggies and if you say, oh, I don't like that, um, I use the excuse, well, I'm a vegetarian. They go to their cupboard, well, we have tofu, I have this, and it's, there's a stigma, how people view you. And when I was pregnant with my daughter, the, the guilt and the, and the, from family also, now that you're pregnant, you have to eat chicken. You have to eat this now. If, for, if you love your daughter and you love being pregnant, you have to eat this. So to me, eating is only a small aspect of it. It's the whole emotional stress and issues about, about society and, and being, you're put on the spot. You have to lie about what you eat. You have to make okay, excuses okay, for Okay, I, I get it. Are, are you <laughs> I keep here, going. No, are you here to raise awareness or do you I'm want here, something? Well, if I've had people, no, I've had, I want to know, I want people to know that it's not just about the food. There's, okay. we have, there's a lot of emotional issues around it. There is raising awareness for those parents that have their kids are sitting at the table and they're going to sit there till they starve. That, that wouldn't, that wouldn't have happened with me. I mean, there's, there's a stubborn, I don't want to eat because I don't like peas. And then there's like me, where you really cannot eat that food. I want parents that have picky eaters to know that 
there might be something. There's studies being done now that there is a genetic link. Um, Amber had testing done to show that she doesn't have one of the 55 taste sensors. There is something on the verge about to be discovered about this whole several thousands of us that all eat like this. And we, we support each other with, you know, with uh, the emotional issues that we have to go to, whether it's weddings or camp or, you know, all that other thing. So... I I find I need tools for take a breath. <laughs> no, seriously, I, you're, I you're repeating my... yourself. I, I don't mean to. Right, I'm not trying right. to cut you off. Actually, I am. Um, it's your show. <laughs> no, but I mean you're you're about the third lap around. Right, right. Of, of, I just want to, uh, of saying. I no, do that don't a lot. Say it again. I do that a lot. I know, but please don't say it again. <laughs> I, I I get that it's more than just about eating. There's a stigma right. about it, and a lot of that is is an emotional issue for you. You have to cope with that, right? I mean, I, you know, for me, I don't care whether somebody likes what I eat or what I, or they don't. I mean, I could care less whether they like what I eat but or what we, I don't. We do. But, that's... well, that's a choice you have to make. And, and if you are on a limited diet, then that there is a challenge there, no doubt about it. Because if the world presents 80% foods that you choose not to eat or cannot eat, then you are restricted and you have to make life changes according to that. And you want to make people aware that these children may not just be picky eaters. It may not be a power issue. It may not be just them being obstinate. It may be that they truly have a problem ingesting a certain food. I got you the first time you said it. I, I, I really did. All right, next, we're going to meet a young woman who can...